you, Mr. Shoemaker. Happy Sabbath to everyone, and good afternoon. <clears throat> I originally wasn't on the schedule to speak today. Um, the person who was was supposed to give a split sermon, so I was uh, volunteered to take this spot <laughs> and then told to give a sermonette. I said, well, I got a sermonette, but I don't have a, a split sermon. And then he said, well, just make it, you know, just add what you can to it, and we'll go from there. So <laughs> this is kind of a hybrid sermonette, I was kind of calling it. Uh, not a full split sermon, but a little longer than normal. So what are you, what are you plugged into? That's what I titled it. What are you plugged into? Did you know that the average American consumes 10 hours and 39 minutes of media a day? Nielsen Media Research Group has just released brand new numbers on the media consumption patterns of Americans. And they are absolutely staggering. According to Nielsen, the amount of media that we consume per day has increased just since the first quarter of 2015. This is the time of year when we celebrate our independence. But how in the world can we ever be truly independent when most of us are willingly plugging ourselves into the matrix for more than 10 hours a day? If you feed anything into your mind for hours every day, it's going to change the way that you think, the way that you feel about things, and the way that you view the world. This endless barrage of news and entertainment has fundamentally altered the belief system of tens of millions of Americans. And this, is, this has had very serious implications to our society. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, brainwashing is a forcible, a forcible indoctrination to induce someone to give up basic political, social, and religious beliefs and attitudes and to accept contrasting regimented ideas. But nobody is forcing us to plug into the matrix every day. Instead, this is something that we are willingly doing to ourselves. We are willingly allowing ourselves to become brain brainwashed. In fact, Nielsen says that Americans are doing it more than ever before. If you feel like you're spending more time than ever before watching streaming content, you're right. U.S. adults spent 10 hours and 30, 39 minutes a day consuming media in the first quarter of 2016. That's up a full hour from the first quarter of 2015. And it, and it uh, thanks, to, uh, and thanks to substantial increase in smartphones and tablet usage, according to Nielsen's Q1 2016 audience report. Here's how the 10 hours and 39 minutes breaks down by device. Live TV, four hours and 39 minutes. Time-shifted TV, 33 minutes. Now, time-shifted, I, I wasn't sure what that meant, and that just means something that you recorded and you watch later. Radio, one hour and 52 minutes. DVDs, eight minutes. Video games, consoles, 14 minutes. Multimedia devices, such as Apple TV or Roku's, 13 minutes. Internet on the PC, 58 minutes. Smartphones, one hour and 39 minutes. And tablets, 31 minutes. Let's think about that. If you take a 24-hour day and remove a generous eight hours for sleeping, you're left with 16 hours. Now, taking away this average daily media use, and you are left with about five and a half hours. That is about how long the average school day is for our children, leaving them with no time left. For adults, this leaves five and a half hours to do your chores, your errands, getting ready for work, eat your meals, and actually do some work. 
Even if you could do all of that in just five and a half hours, where does God fit in? Fit in? Much less anything else, like spending time with family and friends. It's no wonder that Americans have pushed God out of everything. They just frankly don't have time for him. Being plugged in to media allows us to be plugged in to the agendas of society. Just about whatever agenda you want to talk about, the main way it's being advanced is through these devices. Our televisions, our radios, our DVD players, or even our computers are constantly telling us what to think. And this has results in the population of brainwashed sheeple that is more closely resembling a horde of mindless zombies with each passing year, just wandering around so plugged in to what they're watching or hearing, they can't see what is happening in the world around them. I saw an example of one of these mindless zombies when I went to the eye doctor about a year ago. I was sitting in the, the waiting room looking at a magazine. You know those old-fashioned things, it's actually made of paper that you know are found on tables in waiting rooms. The door opened and as most people do, or at least used, at least used to do, I looked up. I saw a boy about nine or ten years old playing a game on an electronic device as he was coming in. Now, there were double doors at the entrance and his mom held open the first door and he walked through it without looking up. The mom continued to stand there holding it open for another woman with them as well. It appeared to be the grandma. The child moved forward through the door continuing to stare at his screen. He never looked up. He stopped before the next door just continuing to look at his screen, never looking up. While she was holding open the first door for the, older, for the other woman, the mom reached forward and opened the second door and nudged her son through it. Again, he never looked up. Never acknowledges there's even a door. Just moved forward. Once he gets inside, she steers him to a bench and then nudges him to sit down. He never looked up, not even once. When his name was called, she guided him to stand, stand up and walk forward to the offices, and again, guiding him through the door. In this whole experience, that boy never took his eyes off the screen, not once, and I was looking. <clears throat> At least two things are clearly wrong with this scenario. He was a mindless zombie, completely unaware of anything that was going on around him. And as a boy, he should have been the one holding the door for his mother and his grandma, not the other way around. There was an article published in the US, usatoday.com on April 19, 2017 called Sound of Mind, Negative Effects of Technology on Children. This article revealed many startling side effects that the plugged in culture is having on our children who are begging to be plugged in at a ridiculously young age. Many children already having their own devices by the time they are toddlers. Toddlers. I know that, I know that some of you have childcare are well aware of this crazy trend. According to the article, overuse of electronic devices may cause impairment in the development of a child's social skills. This includes the ability to make friends, take responsibility for actions, display good manners, use polite language, control emotions or temper, follow verbal directions, and develop empathy for others. According to one study, it is found that teenagers who persistently logged onto Facebook were more likely to present psychological issues such as mania, paranoia, aggressiveness, antisocial behavior, narcissism, 
and increased substance abuse. According to research, playing video games releases dopamine and produces effect, effects that are similar to drug cravings, which can result in addiction. It's also been found that watching too much television discourages, discourages children from reading and increases their desire for material goods, thus decreasing a child's ability to be patient and to be able to have delayed gratification. This is of great concern when it comes to our young people because they are spending an enormous amount of time on the internet. Now, TV isn't only in your home, it's in the palm of your hand. And you can take it wherever you go. The majority of Americans, 73%, indicated that they go online on a daily basis, and many go online several times per day. A Pew Research Center survey collected data from internet users between June and July of 2015 and confirmed that Ameri Americans are constantly logging in. Young people are the most connected. The study found that 36% of people ages 18 to 29 are online almost constantly and 50% go on several times per day. It has been estimated that there are 54,900 Google searches, 7,200 tweets written, 125,400 YouTube videos viewed, and 2,500,000 emails sent out every second. Every second. So, what is all this information doing to us? Dr. Lee Han Hanlington of DeMontford University, Leicester, has made some troubling discoveries regarding this excessive internet usage. He found the more times a person used the internet or a mobile phone, the more likely they were to experience cognitive failures. These failures include not turning up to appointments, having trouble paying attention while in a conversation, or forgetting why they went from one house, one part of the house to another. This is a very under-examined area and a very important one. We are using technology on a daily basis, but we don't under understand its effects on us, said Dr. Hamilton. Of much more importance, is what this endless barrage of information is doing to our belief systems. We are willingly enslaving ourselves to a matrix that is deeply anti-Christian, and it was inevitable that this would result in the decaying of a Christian foundations in the Western world. Do you think, who do you think controls the majority of the news and entertainment that we consume? More than 90% of what we get through our television is controlled by just six media corporations and in turn are controlled by the elite of the world. The elite of the world was seriously anti-Christian views and practices. And the internet has become highly controlled as well by the same people. Fortunately, there are still many independent websites or you can hear an alternative point of view but increasingly, web traffic is, com is coming to be dominated by just a handful of giant companies. And they are pushing anti-Christian agendas with every ounce of their being. Here's an excerpt from an outstanding article that was just published by Jonathan Van Maren, who is a columnist for the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform. He writes, quote, and yet the Judo-Christian foundations of the West that brought such success and such prosperity have either been removed or in the final stages of demolition. The sanctity of life is gone. But most of us have not noticed this simply because we don't toss the corpses of the murder murdered out the front door into the street, but we quietly deposit them in dumpsters behind the clinics or vaporize them in modern, up-to-date incinerators. New ideologies 
have taken over our legal system. And a short march to labeling Holy Scripture as hate, hate speech has already begun. The number of citizens who still attend church or are even aware that Christianity was the lifeblood of our civil, civilization is plummeting. Things may be peaceful for the moment, but the dark clouds in the distance bulge with thunder, and the rumblings are already begun. Christian universities are told they are ineligible to start law school, to start a law school, because they believe that Christians have, they believe what Christians have always believed. Christian medical professionals are told they will be forced to refer patients for killing and Christian professionals are subjected to formal investigations at the slightest hint that they, they have violated the new secular religion. This is just a calm before the storm. But because Christians are so distracted with the high drama of ordinary day-to-day -day life, they may not hear the rumblings until the thunder splits the sky. And that's the end of the quote by Jonathan Van Maren. We are reminded of this very thing by Christ in Luke 21, 34 through 36. Let's go there, go there to read his words of warning. Luke 21, 34. Luke 21, 34 through 36. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and care of this life, and that day come and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. I sometimes like to go to other translations to see how they read certain scriptures. One that was interesting, one that's very interesting to use, is called the message. It's written more like a conversation between people. It's not always accurate, but I did like the way that they wrote this passage. So I want to read the same passage to you in Luke, but this time from the Message Bible. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise, spring on you suddenly like a trap. For it's going to come, come on everyone, everywhere, at once. So whatever you do, don't go to sleep at the switch. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. Now I'm saying, I'm not saying that being plugged into all things media in, is in itself wrong or evil. Only that we must guard against how much time we spend on these devices and what we're doing with them. Because what we allow into our minds does matter greatly. Like myself, for instance, I have a two-hour commute to work, and I could choose to, to fill my time listening to the radio, talk radio, or my favorite music station. But instead, I usually try to find a sermon or two I like to listen to, and I'll listen to that or other church publications from my smartphone. I'm plugged in, but I'm using my time plugged into God's Word and teachers. I'm choosing to fill my mind with the truth. So turn with me to Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1. <clears throat> Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. Verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So many people today are always seeking the next best video game, the next coolest movie, the next best television show, that really cool YouTube video, or the big news story. It seems to be this silent epidemic that is destroying our relationships with, with each other and with God, if we even have a relationship to begin with. And we all know that this plays right into the hands of the gods of the God of this world, who desires nothing more than to distract God's true children from what is really important in this world. Turn with me to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 33. Very short verse. We all probably know it by heart. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This scripture reminds us that we should be seeking God's kingdom first and foremost. God's righteousness should be guiding our thoughts and our choices, not today's news and entertainment. The controls are in our hands. We have a choice to make, to make on whether to be plugged into Satan's matrix or plugged into God. Take our Facebook pages, for example. You can literally share anything. Your thoughts, pictures, quotes, scriptures, links to articles, anything you want. So what are you sharing? Are we using it to share the latest political scandal or saga, the latest movie trailers, the latest conspiracy theories, the latest cat videos, uh, videos or photos that ridicule others, quizzes to learn what 80s movie you might be most related to? Or are you using the ability to share anything for good, sharing scripture passages, recent Bible studies we've had, inspirational quotes, prayer requests? What about the excellent media things our church creates? Do we share the Beyond the Day programs, the BT dailies, links to our church literature, or to sermons? If we would choose to fill the majority of our Facebook pages with these things, think how much God's word will go out to the world. There's nothing wrong with sharing any of these things. But the bulk of what we share should promote God and his way of life. And above all, everything we share, everything we listen to, everything we put our attention towards, should pass the Philippians 4.8 test. Let's go there to remind ourselves what we as Christians should be plugged into. Philippians 4 verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Or in the modern age, we might add, share these things. Let's try to make our go to only share and be plugged into these things which pass this test. Today's media knows how to capture our attention and keep it away from God. Satan has slowly twisted nearly everything around us to keep people under his influence. His control of the airwaves is ever-present, and if he can create a distraction to tear us away from time of prayer and Bible study and meditation, have no doubt that he will. We cannot let this happen. We must stay plugged into God's word, his ways, and his will every single day.